Hello and welcome to our channel and today we also have some freshly brewed points to ponder over. Today we're gonna ponder over the discourse that the Chinese state-run media push forward to the international audience in relation to uh, BRI which is Belt and Braid initiative again. So in 2013 since its announcement the Belt and Road initiative has gained great attention from all over the world as Chinese government invites the attention with its proactive promotion of BRI in many ways. For instance it can be better understood through the enormous coverage of BRI by all the Chinese state-run media like CGTN, Xinhua News, CCTV and Global Times. It has also drawn the attention of the international think tanks and researchers. Thus, they have tried to analyze BRI from economic and political perspectives. Moreover, the BRI researchers have also pointed out the uniqueness of the BRI terminology coined and used by Chinese government officials and the Chinese media. Therefore, here we are trying to carry out a critical discourse analysis of BRI coverage reports by the Chinese state-run media and in order to uh, understand the distinguished nature of BRI terminologies and the hidden messages underlying. So at this point, the question is, what is a critical discourse analysis? So we are we gonna try to understand the critical discourse analysis by understanding three key concepts of the critical discourse analysis, and they are discourse, ideology, and power. So, as Fairglow believes that the use of language is a kind of social practice, especially when it is termed as a discourse. In the process of CDA, the discourse doesn't only refer to the uttered words or the written text, but also refers to a complete social process associated with the context, which includes the encoding and decoding of the content of the text or the uttered words. The second is about ideology. Although ideology is an abstract concept, however, it is a very important notion in critical discourse analysis. Fuller defined an ideology is an unbiased word that relates to the ways in which people engage and justify their lives. Uh, Thompson believed that the ideology is used to justify the power. Importantly, CDA also concerns the potential effect of a certain ideology, which, which plays a crucial role of the text to introduce uh, to inject and impact others' original ideology. In the research of critical discourse analysis, power is one of the most important keys. Odwak claimed that one of the main purposes of critical discourse analysis research is to understand the relationship between language and power. On one hand, power can be defined as people taking actions in order to achieve personal or national goals and enjoying certain benefits. On other hand, it is the tool to control not only the people but also their thoughts and mobilize resources to materialize their goals. So, what to expect from this study or rather from this video? Based on Fairclough's three-dimensional model as the analytical tool, the discourse of the journalistic reports on BRI texts yes. in this study are the recent English reports on BRI and its intention towards post-COVID-19 virus global situation. The target text in this study are the recent English reports on BRI and its intention towards post-COVID-19 virus 
global situation. Since this study also adopts descriptive approach depending on statistical data to conduct a critical discourse analysis on English journalistic reports, therefore both quantitative data and qualitative elements are taken into account in order to identify any pattern if there is any. Now let's talk about the research methodology that has been used to carry out this research. So firstly this is a corpus method meaning a corpus based critical discourse analysis. So here the corpus based method is a modern language research method that uses real language samples as research objects. It uses computer tools and probability statistical methods to analyze massive language facts from a macro perspective. Second, compared with manual analysis, corpus research can quickly store, identify, and count a large number of complex language usage patterns, expand the scale of research, and improve the reliability of conclusions. Third, using the corpus method for media discourse analysis signifies to collect corpus from a large number of media publications. According to statistical sampling method, the corpus is annotated and then summarized the appearance phenomenon. Then the trend and the propensity lead us to the in-depth social semiotic interpretation. It is a data-driven inductive study that can make more objective judgments as this method includes actual phenomenon. Next, here we come to a visual representation of the study corpus. Cor the corpus is consisted of uh, 62 journalistic articles published by the Chinese government media houses from mid-April to mid-July 2020. The importance of the period is when China declares its win over coronavirus while the rest of the world was still fighting against it. The 62 journalistic reports are downloaded from Global Times, Xinhua News and CGTN. The reports are referred to each other by the publishing houses as this corpus only comprised of English reports which are targeted to the international readers. So just to explain it a bit further, so these 62 articles downloaded and taken into a same basket and the, the extracts that we got, yeah. they are word frequency, lexical density, readability, passivizations, uh, keywords, concordance lines of the keywords, context of the words, keywords and collocations and modal verbs. So when we got these extracts then these extracts can be filtered through fair close three-dimensional model to analyze the extracts of this BRI corpus and Halliday's SFC model which is systemic functional grammar model to analyze the extracts of this PRA corpus. So they, then we come to the key observations and the discussion on the same. As we just saw that one of the extracts from this corpus is the keywords. So what is the importance of keywords? A keyword generally refers to the significant words which are more frequent in the study corpus in comparison with the reference corpus. Hence, the statistical data provides a useful pattern to characterize the text. Here, the reference corpus is English Wave 2013 with a huge number of tokens. In the study of corpus linguistics, this kind of statistical data aids us to understand the inclination of the corpus as it stands out to be different than a usual corpus. As Fitzsimmons and others confirmed that the inclination is to see through the words whose frequency is usually high in comparison with other norm. And we gener this is a human tendency if we want to lay some emphasis on something that we tend to repeat the words 
in relation to our intention. Now let's have a look on the three-dimensional plan of discourse analysis. A further analysis on the expressions in the discourse is required in order to comprehend the discursive practice. Thus, by attempting to understand the selection of specific words and expressions is helpful in this process. The social context including the social practices tells us about the discourse which are influenced by ideology or some other factors. Henceforth, the three-dimensional discourse analysis has been chosen to be conducted, which will correspondently allow us to be conscious of the linguistic description of discourse, discourse production, communication and reception, and the explanation of the relationship between discourse and the reasons behind. This three-dimensional theoretical framework is represented below, where the core is the text with its description and analysis. The outer part of the text is consisted of discourse practice and it has got two components which are comprehension of the narrative and the process of the interpretation. And this discourse practice is wrapped with social practice and the two elements, the two key elements I would rather say of uh, social practice are explanation of the shared knowledge of a society and societal situation and institutional analysis. Now let's have a look on the concordance lines. This is one of the outcomes that we got when we have checked the corpus through the corpus linguistic software as a TCM which means traditional Chinese medicine and Concordance lines shows left. the immediate left and the right part of this keyword. The search term TCM occurs 24 times in BRI corpus. It is mainly found in two texts. Uh, these two texts stood out because the number of occurrence in these two texts were greater than the others and this table displays a random sample of 10 concordance lines showing the most immediate context in which the search term is used. So in the light of COVID-19 outbreak and with the help of BRI, China found the opportunity to promote TCM which is again traditional Chinese medicine and concordance lines show that the reports claimed that TCM has got a unique strength of prevention and control over COVID-19 along with the idea merging it up with BRI China proposed to globalize TCM and establish 30 TCM centers in BRI member countries. A few reports by BBC and uh, South China Morning Post also show the criticism China received while pushing for TCM as TCM is also produced from wildlife. From a linguistic perspective, China seems to be very optimistic about TCM, however no data has been provided in the reports. Along with the concordance lines, now here is the time to see the context where this TCM is used and how this TCM is put in the context. So these paragraphs of the text talked highly of TCM and its effectiveness in the process of curing COVID-19. As reports uh, say, TCM is only used as a helping component in treating 92% cases of China and 90% amongst them have shown a positive result. However, this report doesn't share any particularities about the use and research on TCM and its ingredients. At the end, the positivity of TCM is connected to the BRI and proposed to establish 30 TCM centers in 20 member countries 
I would rather say 20 BRI member countries. So here you can also have a look of the context which is taken from one of the uh, journalistic piece that has been published by Chinese state-run media. So here are some final points to leave you with. This study used corpus data to investigate and analyze the discourse and consequently understand any prejudice or biases. As Kuang Rung uh, suggested, a keyword list generated by a corpus software focuses on the word frequency of the words based on the statistics, not on intuition, so that the qualitative analysis can be backed by the quantitative data. In addition, the use of quotes from different world leaders who has talked highly about BRI are numerous in the corpus and it can be interpreted in two possible ways. Firstly, Chinese media is cautious and absolve themselves from the commitment of the confirmed success of BRI. Secondly, by mentioning leaders from a few uh, countries and their positive evaluation on BRI can be potential personal for others. However, political perspectives and affiliation of the source are not identified in the texts. Second point is whether or not the final axis around which the various approximations of reports revolved in the CPC, which means Communist Party of China, and as BRI's outlook worldwide is quite debatable and the BRI as a project needs involvement of other parties uh, only by printing the favorable words might bring the intended results in long term uh, that there is a big doubt about it and the analysis reveals certain characteristics that might also raise question against the credibility and impartiality of CGTN, Global Times and Xinhua News. And the final point is despite a bit unorganized political situation in the whole world because of COVID-19 pandemic, the interdisciplinary approaches to the language of modern international politics could shape up our opinion and influence our decision and media discourse plays a crucial role in this process. So people, people could strive for more peaceful and liberal ways to narrow down the social and ideological distance and solve political problems based on the perception of the language is the nucleus to establish and maintain relations and power. I hope this video helped you to understand about critical discourse analysis, its methodology and China's Belt and Road Initiative and its intentions and I thank you again for stopping by. Thank you.